Hi everyone, Kayla here, one of your professors at English Without Borders, and today I'm excited to share with you three tips on things not to do when looking for an English conversation partner. Now here we are specifically talking about the English language, but these tips can be applied to any language you are learning. In fact, I use these tips myself when looking for conversation partners in my non-native languages as well. So let's get to it. The number one thing not to do is ask for help without giving anything in return. So before you message someone, look, take one extra second to make sure that that person wants to learn your native language or a language that you are fluent in so that you can give something in return because no one will want to speak with you and they will not respond to your messages if they know that you cannot help them. Tip number two, do not talk too much. I find that when I speak with a non-native English speaker, and they are nervous in the beginning and they want to practice as much as possible. Maybe it's their first time speaking in a long time. They're really excited to be speaking with a native and they get nervous and they just talk and talk and talk and they don't give me a chance to practice in my non-native language or they don't give me an opportunity to respond to their comments in English. Remember that any conversation should always be 50-50, right? It is a give and a take. And that is how we create genuine relationships and bonds with other people. So don't talk too much so that you give your conversation partner the adequate time to respond to what you're saying, to engage with you and to interact, right? And this is how we can make jokes and have more fun and tell more stories. Let them come in and tell a story to you as well in their native language. Sometimes I find as well that perhaps, for example, if you speak Spanish and I speak English and we are helping each other with conversation exchange, perhaps you keep speaking in English with me and I feel uncomfortable reminding you that, hey, uh, I only have 20 minutes left and I really want to practice my Spanish but you keep speaking and speaking in English and you forget to help me for a certain amount of time in my non-native language. So if this is a problem for you, if you just talk so much that you forget about the time or you forget to ask your partner, hey, do you want to switch now? And you help push them to find confidence in them speaking their non-native language as well. If this is difficult for you, feel free to set a timer. Put a timer on your watch, set a timer on your laptop, put a clock right beside your phone when you're speaking so that you can make sure you give your conversation partner an opportunity to speak as well. The third tip I have for you is not engaging in small talk. That is the worst thing you can do at the beginning when finding a conversation partner. Those messages when we are deciding if we want to speak with you, if it is a good fit or a good match, we need to engage in small talk for those conversations so that we know that, okay, I feel comfortable with this person. I think I would like to do a video call with them or maybe we can talk on the phone or send audio messages to each other. This small talk helps us get more comfortable and build that relationship. So it's very important. If you ask direct questions or are very detailed about your life too soon or too quickly, then people get a little weirded out by it. We, we don't know if we can trust you. It feels invasive, right? So to speak about those more complex topics, telling us about your life, about who you are, then maybe wait until you're actually on a call with this person. For the small talk in the beginning, make sure you're talking about simple things, like this is what I wanna learn, this is why I want to learn it, these are my hobbies, this is where I live, this is where I'm from, etc. And make sure you ask the other person questions about themselves as well, relating to those same topics. That small talk will help you create a good foundation so that later 
your possible partner will become your actual partner and want to engage more in conversation with you. That's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed these three tips on what not to do when finding a conversation partner. Go ahead and try these today. Let me know how they work for you and if they help you. If you have any more tips on things that we should or should not do when looking for conversation partners, please put them in the comments below. Share with us your knowledge and your experiences so that we can learn from them as well. It was great sharing with you all today and I hope to see you next time. Take care and happy learning.